Welcome back to Maz Garage. I'm Kev. I'm Crick. And I'm Smokey. On this episode, we'll be talking about sobriety and addiction. So grab a log and join us by the fire. It's like everything else, it's your intent. Why are you asking them? Are you asking because you want to be better or because you just want them to feel heard? Right. You know I mean, or because you're trying to catch them. Right. Yeah. Trying to Could see the combination. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's, it's a lot of stuff is misconstrued off intent. Like it's not just about what you say. It's the reason for what you say, you know what I mean? And that comes across in how other people receive it. And that honestly just goes back to like, what is your intent behind utilizing or partaking in the substance or the activities? Right. That's what I said. Yes. Yeah, is it, is it an escape? Or is it a tool? You know what I mean? Like, are you trying to step out of your situation? Or are you trying to accentuate your situation? Like, mm-hmm. there was a couple that came into the dispensary. Oh, just, I love this couple. They were like this old, like, German couple. And they had, like, this heavy German accent. Nice. And they would just be like, they'd come in by weed from time to time. And we, we'd talk to them about it. And they said, what we use it for is every night, we smoke a little bit of weed, make a really nice dinner. And then we put on some really good music. And so we use it to accentuate the dinner and accentuate the music and then just live in that for a little while. And it's like, we don't do it all day. We don't do, they don't even do it every day, every day either. It was just like, they'd have these evenings that were smoke, we eat a great meal and get lost in the music, you know? Those people should try nitrous balloons. We are making memories and then destroying them. Okay, no, that is hippie crack, man. Did we not all cry during that Steve-O documentary? Relax your mind. I'm going to blast off. That was because of Durst dog, and then there's everything that happens to... <laughs> <laughs> For listening to music, I'm sorry. Like, that, since trying Nitro Balloons not that long ago and listening to music, and it just, you're in a completely different headspace like i have never listened to music like that on that level and it almost is a little bit disappointing to listen to music and not be on that level like i'm just like i felt it at like the high that brings up at a good point that's chasing the dragon that's the main yeah. reason that i used to smoke weed every once in a great while you know what i mean i never did it all the time but you don't get that high that you used to get and you don't get that euphoria you do more of it and more of it and more of it and more of it trying to reach that same level of euphoria and becomes dangerous right dangerous. yes just a couple of days ago a friend a friend of ours we smoked a bowl and that friend like me i'm fine i didn't even really look like i had just smoked weed but the friend got so high they like sat down and they just like couldn't move because they were like, everything was just so intense. Like they couldn't really do very much. They were supposed to be like waxing their snowboard, getting ready for Bohemia. But, and they also had told me, they're like, I don't smoke, I don't smoke nearly as much as I used to. It doesn't even take that that much for me to really get high. I should have just let them hit the bullet once, but they hit it like two, three times. And it just, when I see people that it does that, like people that get that too high level, and I think of how much weed I smoke on a daily basis that I don't even come close to scratching that level. It just, it puts it in perspective. That's sad. A lot of overdoses happen. Like people who haven't done a substance in a very long time, get it again. They're like, Oh, I used to do like all this much. I'm just going to keep going. And then it's too much their body. Even in the animus industry, there was a, you know, it was a tolerance break. Like people who didn't feel that much freaking high would even take three days off. And even after three days of just nothing, it's like fasting. It would hit you that much harder. You know what I mean? Because again, you're not built up on it. That's where I feel like I read this in a, in a comic because I've been watching more stuff about other people who have taken breaks from you know smoking or quit smoking altogether. To see what they've and, done. Yeah, to see what they've done and their experience with it. And one comment that really kind of stood out is they said, like, you've been high for so long. Sober can be almost a new kind of high for you. It's a, it's a- Beer here. No, thank you. I prefer to get high on life. It's It's a a different different perspective. Yeah, Yeah, it's a different mind state. And that's literally how I felt. I felt like being sober, I was checking with my mind in a bunch of different ways. And 
it was just weird to have that that clarity and that this different thought process there's definitely negatives from it but but even a sober now is different from the sober before you started smoking yeah. it's a whole different kind of sober because now you've got a different perspective to correlate with yeah yeah i, I honestly <laughs> I haven't been sober when I, before taking this break in honestly, probably four to five years. Like that's wild to say, but I smoke pretty like actual almost. sober, sober. Yeah. I've been smoking weed almost every single day for four to five years to help with anxiety and depression and things like that. So it was like pretty much every day. I think I took a one or two day tolerance break at one point, but it's like, I was always kind of, I thought I needed it. I thought if I stop smoking weed am I gonna have like an anxiety attack am I gonna go into a depressive episode am I gonna is my life just gonna fall apart if I stop smoking weed no I'm you just, almost I'm, I'm, that's that hamster that's the hamster wheel see like before like my tolerance break would be like me going away for like a night or two on like a vacation or like go to like an event or something that like I just don't have it with me I don't bring it with me because I don't want to like get caught with it but nowadays I don't really have to have that issue <laughs> Right. That's, that's where I knew kind of problem too, is because I'd always find a way to bring it with me, even mm -hmm. in dangerous situations, I'd find a way to make sure I had it with me just in case, just in case I needed it. You know what I mean? And that's where it's like, they say you can't get like addicted to weed, but it's like, you can get addicted to the mindset it puts you in. It. it can feel like it. Yeah. Like you get relying on it where it's like, what if I need it? What if I'm having a really bad time and I need it? And then like, but you don't you're fine before you don't it. you'll be fine it's, now ju after. it's just a secondary substance right. like you may be feeling bad but there's a million and a half other different things that you can that you can do and it's okay to feel bad it's okay to feel sad it's okay to feel anxious it's okay to feel depressed it's so okay. like emotions are fine that's what and makes that's really human. yeah at the heart of it like it is okay yeah like so many people are like oh i feel i feel depressed and this is a bad thing it's like you're just feeling an emotion based upon like the situation that you're in like honestly it's probably a good thing that you're feeling bad because it means that you're feeling like the way that you should be thinking about someone about something just something happening that's not necessarily a good thing like if you're feeling good about a bad thing happening that's the for that's how serial killers get brought up right. yeah change your situation like if you're that depressed in your situation make the efforts to change it don't cover up your situation yeah right. and that's yeah like if it's if it's if it's continuing to make you feel bad like is it you doing something or is it something happening and do you have control over helping yourself feel the emotions that you want to feel right you're feeling the emotions for a reason it's your right. it's your mind telling you to look deeper into the situation and at the heart of it humans will always have emotions that's just something that's in our genetics that's one yeah it's one of the things that makes us human it's that sentience and even like someone that, oh, that that person that person shows no signs of emotion they have it inside but something that they choose not to express it i don't know if you experience this as well kev from with going sober from like thc but i have had so many more dreams oh my god i started a dream journal same same <laughs> every every i didn't never had dreams i i would have i'd have dreams once in a great while i have dreams every single night like every for the last night. four days wow no the last 30 days oh and wow. to the dude every single day i have these very vivid dreams and some of them are very dark some of them are very like messed up and some of them are very like sad like one i had was a really sad dream and that sadness like carried on for the most of that day like I, it, it locked wow. into my mind with it but that's where i think dreams are your subconscious and when you bury that stuff down you're not dealing with it you're just pushing it down pushing mm -hmm. it down is that healthy ah, what's the worst that could happen I'm a tumor, 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 oh, 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 I'm a tumor. And so your dreams, your subconscious mind saying, no, nope, you're sleeping now. So here it all comes back up. And it's like, so they've been getting better. Like the first started with the dreams being pretty intense and deep. And now they're getting to more like good and bad dreams and like mixtures of it. Could it be 
because at the beginning you were going through that adjusting state that adjusting withdrawal. state so yes it was almost like your withdrawals being enacted for you visually but they had to do it while you were sleeping and it's hey you want these to go away give it back because even though even, <laughs> even you may not be feeling irritable but you may have irritableness to you just because you're going through that state the only reason I think it's the subconscious is because at least how I interpreted the dreams, there are things that I hadn't dealt with. Like it made sense why I was having that dream. Like that's what um, I've been noticing as I write them down. That's the only way yes, I've noticed because I'm writing them down. Interesting. The themes you see common themes, like one, and you guys were in a couple too, where like people were like, I had a bunch of dreams about people trying to steal from me or steal from my friends. It wasn't exactly for me. There was people trying to steal from my friends and huh. me hunting down the thief. <laughs> yeah and like chasing the bounty hunter that, right and so it's like it's and those ones i don't exactly know what it means but yeah some of the other ones it was like no that makes a lot of sense why i'm having that dream because i never really dealt with that and so it's like you have to deal with stuff it doesn't just go somewhere you know what i mean if you don't accept it or let it go or move beyond it it's going to still be there in your mind somewhere obviously and you've got probably four years of stuff to unpack in there Yep, something <laughs> along those lines it, it that's very interesting that like i don't remember like half like any of my dreams and i almost i feel like at the time that i wake up like if i i had to have been just doing something to a level of dreaming before i just woke up but i think it's because as soon as i wake up i'm thinking about what are the things that i need to accomplish for the day well, THC right. in, in, inhibits dreams. I think it's the really? memories. Well, so you still have the dreams, but you can't remember them when you wake up. Like it, And the THC is the reason that... Yeah, that's what I've, at least what I was told being in dispensaries and stuff like that, because that's what I hear from a lot of people who smoke is that you don't have as many dreams when you smoke. Huh. And like, even when I smoke, the only time I would have a dream is if I were to wake up in the morning and then not smoke and fall back asleep and then wake up again would be the only time I'd ever have an actual dream when I was smoking. And yet, literally, since this, since I stopped smoking, and caffeine, I guess, too, is the other thing that Inhibitor, I stopped. Inhibitor, that makes sense. Yeah, but every it's night I have had a dream. Every single night in the last 30 days I've had a dream. And I remembered that's, it in the morning. I want to see these dream journals dude, it's, eventually. Like, I, that's just so wild. Yeah. Just imagine can, going through it, dude. Like, it's like oh. from not having dreams to like you think they're real too because you're not used to remembering them. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's been. So it's been what a what are what are what are things going to be like? Like you said that you're not going to do this forever. So you're and you're looking forward to smoking cannabis again. So what are things going to be like as soon as you start smoking cannabis again and then you no longer remember these dreams at vivid detail? That's where I'd like to go more into moderation. So I want to try to do it where I'm just maybe on the weekends for, you know, limited like two days where it's, I'm going to use it as a tool. I'm going to use it for creative reasons. And so at times, yeah, I might not have dreams, but the other five days of the week, I'll probably have dreams because my dreams started like the second day after I stopped smoking weed, you know? So like if it, it'll push them out, but I should still have those five days where I'm still going through the dreams and my subconscious is able to come up because that's a natural process that built us as having dreams for some reason, you know what I mean? So it's like, we need that, you know? Nothing is random, right? Everything has a purpose. Right, especially when dreams seem so random. You think about a lot of people, well, you think about some, some of the people that like invented something that they're like, it came to me in a dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thinking to myself yeah. like, how? I, I, I don't, nothing comes to me in a dream. I don't remember anything <laughs> about it. That's where I would have learned how to better lucid dream. They probably because... weren't smoking cannabis or drinking coffee or not to the level of like an everyday drinking coffee every day and smoking cannabis every day. I don't know if coffee affects it. Yeah. I think a lot of it is your mindset too, though. Like the mindset that you go into with it. Cause Crick warned me about astral projection last week. Cause we've been talking about doing it for a while. And I, I downloaded an ebook and for some reason, because he warned me, I decided I was going to keep trying it. And so now I found this thing and it says, okay, so before you go to sleep, you're just laying there, get your body in a meditative state and tell yourself, I will remember this. I will not fear what I run into. I will dream lucidly. Welcome to my world. And ever since I 
have remembered everything that I dream. It's only been four days, but every single day, straight, clear as day, I wake up and I remember everything that happened. That's, That's incredible. I've been doing that on accident because I used to smoke to go to bed, like I, to shut off my mind so I could go to sleep. Now I can't sleep, so I have to meditate. Like why I'm in bed, I shut down my brain naturally. So I'm not not with the intent to dream, but maybe that's why I've been having so much more vivid dreams because I've had to kind of put myself in a meditative state. Definitely a level to it. That's that is incredible. That is incredible. You guys almost make me want to like go through a period just to see like if I like what I experience. I I would after going through it for a month. I was so not like there was part of me that was really afraid of going without smoking or any kind of other thing, but I would recommend it. Like, even if you're slightly curious, like try it for a week, but like, I recommend trying it, like just experiencing that sobriety, because I feel like it makes you appreciate substances even more. And it makes you understand, appreciate yourself even more in your own mind and what your own mind's capable of doing. Your own mind's just as fun and interesting as a substance. Yeah. So yeah. it's like taking that time away to actually like just reset, just, you know what I mean? That's where I'm like, I'm excited to smoke. I'm excited to have a nice cup of coffee and get a bunch of stuff done that I need to do. But I feel like I'm going to go back into it with a complete different view of it and a different view of myself that makes me more confident in myself that I don't need substances, that they're just an extra, not a, not a necessity. That's the trick is keeping that mentality, right? Before it turns into an addiction again. Right. And that's where I feel right. like it's moderation, not giving it to myself every single day. I don't need to smoke weed every day. I don't need to smoke weed in general. I do it because it's something that I enjoy. I do it something that I enjoy. Sometimes I can enjoy the after effects of it. Same thing with a cup of coffee. I can enjoy that stimulant and the things that I get done because of that stimulant. You know what I mean? But I don't need it. I enjoy the after effect. I'm personally probably going to stick with this. It's like the, it's like the reason that people go through a diet. Yeah, exactly. You see the results. You're not going to keep up with the diet if you don't like the results. Right. Yeah. You know? Or if you see no results, you're just like, oh, this is crap. But you also eat a cake every night. Right. Or you've done it only one time. And, and yeah, I, I commend you, Cav, too. Like sticking to sobriety is huge like if you could just if i could do that completely like i think part of the reason that i want to go back into it too is to show myself i have control over the substances i can for me i need to know that i can do them and not like worry about if oh if i smoke one day am i going to be smoking all the time know that i can do it with control